I was praying to God for help. And Pastor Eric showed up at the right time. And I'm really thankful he showed up. He doesn't know how much he touched me and he's gonna help me after this. Okay, I had this swollen uh, bone on the inside of my left knee. I thought it was, uh, oh, I can't think what it's called, uh, cellulite. Well, I kept getting these sharp pains, and they just hit the inside of my knee and sometimes the outside of my knee. So I told my GP about it. He said it is a lipoma tumor, which is not a serious thing. It's not a cancerous thing. So he sent me to an orthopedic doctor. That doctor sent me for a CAT scan. They did the CAT scan, and there was nothing there. There was, there was no tumor there. There's, it's still swollen. There's still tissue in there that I don't think should be there. Um, I still get pains periodically. But the report was there was no tumor. Eric had prayed for me, and uh, when I went before I went to get the CAT scan, and then of course there was nothing there, nothing solid there. And especially for headaches, I had a epidural done, and it caused my spine spinal. Uh, fluid to leak and caused a spinal headache, which was major. I mean, it was bad, and it was bad tonight. But I said, "No, I have to come to church." And my mom never went to uh, theological school. And she's always taught us to pray. And, uh, and lately, my face has been kind of. Uh, Low. So I come and I pray and I pray all the time. And it, it, you touched me when you said that. Where I felt the spirit, where I just had to cry. And I don't have it now. <laughs> so thank Amen. you. Praise God. Joseph Wells, I'm from the Crow Creek Sea Tribe in South Dakota. Um, Last year we had church with uh, Pastor Eric and the services. He explained a story about uh, his vision getting better through prayer. Uh, had my yearly eye physical, and um, the doctor t had told me my uh, vision had improved uh, significantly. And I continue. I'm going to continue praying uh, for it to get better. Thank you football and um, on one of our championship games my right knee got taken out two players their helmets hit both sides of my kneecap um, went in and had surgery done and I had a prosthetic kneecap had to be put in and a surgical steel bar through my knee to hold everything together um, over the years my knee kept getting worse and stuff, pretty much through the stress and everything that I put it through, working construction and everything down on my knees all the time, building flooring. And um, I moved out here in 2005 and went to a few different doctors and everything to keep track of it in case I did need to go through them to have surgery. And um, finally, the pain in my knee was getting to where. If I had my knee bent for a long time, if I was sitting down or even laying down and I had a leg crossed or something, it would my whole knee would lock up to where I'd have to physically bend down and straighten my leg with my arms. Um, went and seen Dr. Blankers, and he told me that you know they'd take x-rays and see what's going on and everything, and found out that the metal bar that held not only the kneecap where it was supposed to be, but everything else, the rest of the bone and stuff that they could save in place was detached on one side, and that's why it was giving me so much problems. Um, Saturday, well, two days after that, on Saturday, we had a bonfire out at Doug's parents' place, and um, I was water baptized that night, 
and just dreading my doctor's appointment that was coming up on Tuesday. And um, they did one more x-ray to see exactly where I was and what all they still needed to do because a lot of the swelling that I had on Thursday had gone away. So I was waiting in this little room for the doctor to come back and he came back and he looked at me. He goes, did you go see another doctor or anything and not tell me about it? Or did you go in and have something else done to where you didn't need the metal bar and you didn't need the prosthetic kneecap? And I go, no, you're the only doctor that I've seen. Why? And he put the x-rays up and he goes, you no longer have a prosthetic kneecap and the surgical steel bar is gone. And I looked at the x-rays, and I was like, you got to be kidding me. He's like, tell me what you did. I go, I didn't do anything. He goes, did you see some doctor? Did they just remove it and give you a whole new me? I go, the only doctor that I've seen since Thursday was Jesus. That's it. I got water baptized and saved at a church that I just not that long ago became a member of. And so sad Yeah. And he goes, well... He goes, out of all the believers and stuff like that, Christians and stuff that have come in and out of my office, talked about, you know, the healing power of Jesus and everything, but you're the first one that I've seen it, physical proof within x-rays and everything of this, like, miracle. He should be a Christian. I think he is. He went to my sister's church. He goes to her when he was in Shelton. They were actually from our church. He's a deacon or what? Or an elder again at the uh, Presbyterian Church. He was when we used to yeah. have him. So, I mean, so I'm thinking he's a Christian. So anyway. Sorry. But it's like his first <laughs> yeah. view of it firsthand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, I went, I've been through a lot of stuff in my life, whereas, you know, I still, even after being baptized, and everything, I still had that doubt of, you know, out of all the bad things I've done, why would, you know, Jesus want to save me or help me or anything? And my first thought, because I, I think Pastor had heard something about the problems with my knees and doing a water baptism, you go down on your knees and then you get leaned back. The first thought through my head was, crap, there goes my knee. <laughs> and I just had no pain. When I came out of the water and I thought, you know, maybe it's just one of those days where, where I don't have it. Yeah, the water was cold enough that it just, you know, froze it over. And before we went, I think everybody here that was, was here remembered Pastor saying that they had a heated pool. If Doug would have been out there with that torch warming it up before we got there, it would have been nice and warm. Pressure would have been a pool there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is something, and me and um, Lynn were talking outside when she arrived tonight, that I, and the only way I'd ever find out is when I'm standing in front of God, and I could probably ask him if I'm even able to talk about, you know, if what he did for me was a sign showing, I am here, I do care about you, and here's the rest of your life without pain or surgery needed on your knee. Because awesome. mm -hmm. I was talking to the... If you're from... Foundation. Foundation. Um, what happened to you in church today? <laughs> With your vision and hearing. I got you. Oh, my sister emailed out last night. By who? By, yeah, by who? God. And who helped you? God. So when we first prayed for you, you could see about seven feet in front of you without any blurriness. But then after we prayed, uh, we, you were completely healed. I was at the back of the building. Is that right? Yep. And you could see clearly without any blurriness at all. And then when we prayed for your hearing, you could hear 
just barely behind you, about three feet, and then afterwards you could hear all the way to the back of the building. Is that correct? All right, praise God. Thank you so much. I'm Carmela, and I'm here today to give my testimony um, under the healing of God and the power of these almighty people and God's people. And today they prayed over me because I had two board certified doctors tell me that I was going to need cervical spine surgery, a fusion, and today I am able to move and shout and praise God that I am able to move. I've made it, I made it here, I made it to church. I feel good, I'm full of energy, I have the power of the Lord just over me, and I've, I've overcome the fear of everything. I'm feeling so much better, and um, I wanted to give my testimony and share not to be afraid, not to just to have the faith and to walk in faith by God's grace. And the power Amen. and I feel better today better than I have since the year a year ago that when the accident happened and I'm able to walk I'm proof right now I can turn I had four herniated discs in my neck and three in my back and I am healed I can move <laughs> awesome <Thank you. laughs> My name is Nicole Isaac. I'm from Crow Creek Sioux Tribe, and I just want to say that I'm thankful for Pastor Eric coming and giving me thanks because I used to get anxiety attacks, and he prayed on me, and I don't get them anymore. Thank you. My name is Scott Garber. Uh, we live here in Corinth, Texas. Um, in April of, of 2014, uh, Pastor Eric came through um, and we do some ministry time together and he comes and really blesses us with his presence. And he gave me a word of knowledge at that time that included um, that there was going to be a major increase of favor. And I think the exact words were, uh, and I mean now. And I see uh, men in suits and men coming to you in a major increase in favor. And at the time, of course, uh, we were just in a family business. I figured it was investors, business opportunities, something of the sort. Um, and a year later to the month, uh, April of 2015, uh, my wife and I had the opportunity and, and felt led to run for uh, city government and had never... Um, never thought about doing that before. Uh, and so we prayed about it and sought wise counsel and ran and uh, won the election. We were uh, the only unsupported candidate in Corinth that was not supported by the current political uh, structure in Corinth. Um, we had a huge support with the church. Uh, and just like uh, Pastor Eric said, a lot of men in suits um, uh, Justin Patterson. I'm the production manager here at WBLR DT48. We just got done uh, filming with Pastor Eric Moore. Uh, it was a blessing for us, and uh, I look forward to his spots airing in the month of November. And uh, it's very rare that someone comes in and, and uh, knocks out 12 like he did without any mistakes. Um, you know, I know Pastor Eric's heart. He's been up here before. And I would encourage you to sow a seed into his ministry because, like I said, I know his heart is to reach people. And here at WBLR, we broadcast to 2.2 million people over the air. And also, we stream 24 hours a day, 365 days a year to the world. So this is fertile soil, and I encourage you to sow into Pastor Eric's ministry.